Welcome to Humankind, a 4X strategy game by Amplitude Studios and published by Sega. Does anyone ever care about who makes these, who publishes them? I don't know. Anyway, I played my first game through and I've tried a few more since and I thought I would show you the game as well. I'm not entirely sure how far we'll go, but we'll go a little bit. First things that happens when you start the game, you create your own avatar. And that I found to be actually quite cool because in traditional 4X games like this, you would, well, beside uh, the sci-fi variety, usually you would generally pick, for example, in Civilization, your Civilization, which is pre-made with your pre-made avatar and everything. Uh, it's a little bit different here. You get a whole lot of um, options. You can pick from the presets or you can just customize in whichever way, shape or form you would like. And there are no limitations on the combinations of things. I have made something that somewhat sort of kind of somewhat <laughs> doesn't look like me. Uh, what is really cool about this is you can share your own person as an AI persona. You unlock these things through playing the game and you can give yourself some uh, basic AI behavior. You can uh, get some strength and some uh, biases. So how you would likely interact with others as a AI and you get a level based on how many points you spend and others can play against you without you having to be there, which I think is pretty neat. Now, this game does a whole lot of things different than Civilization, and I like actually all of them. Uh, I do enjoy Civilization, but there, it has some major flaws. This isn't to say that humankind doesn't have its issues either, but they're different, and I like this more at the moment. So let's just jump into a new game. I will reduce the number of enemies actually a little bit. Uh, and we'll leave whatever we have here as it is. The world will go for, let's say, large, because the game does slow down quite significantly later on the larger the world is. The land percentage is fine at 40%. We leave most of this here as it is. Uh, I don't know. Well, let's have random number of continents, which could lead to one continent, which is kind of weird to play on. Now the pace I found is an interesting, weird setting. You would figure that you get 600 turns or 300 turns, but apparently this also implicates how resource generation works. So if you want to play a long, long round, you could pick endless, but it's not actually going to be endless. And you're going to be at the same stage at half of an endless game as you would be at half of a normal game. It's kind of weird. Maybe I haven't figured it out yet, but that's how it felt to me. So we're going to go with slow, getting a little bit of time. Difficulty, there's a whole bunch of them. You start out on town difficulty if you select the thing where it asks you if you have any idea what you're doing. And you go for the middle option. I am going to play on Metropolis. I don't care too much about challenges these days, especially not while talking about a game. Uh, beyond that, we don't have a map selected and I have these two pre-order deluxe thingies going on here, which are just uh, a personality, a world wonder and some personalization options. Now, we are going to start this and there's going to be a little clip at the beginning of this. We start out as a nomadic tribe. I'm going to talk all about what that means and how it's different from starting with a settler in civilization. And I really quite enjoyed this stage. I kind of wish it were longer because uh, this is a stage where you can easily feel left behind while exploring the world. And you see all those pop-ups for <laughs> different civilizations or branches of humanity doing their thing while you're still playing with nuts and berries in the bushes as nature intended. Our universe contains infinite stories. It's very cute. Most of which are about rocks and ice at sub-zero temperatures in a vacuum. Rather boring. However, on a small damp rock, there 
There is a story that bears a second break. It's your story. Like the first four billion years or so mostly concern amino acids. Not much of a page turn. But then, over time, the amino acids bond together and things start to get interesting and a bit violent. A certain subspecies of hominid discovers that you can do more with a sharp rock than annoy your little brother. Tools and weapons are invented. The hominid begin to cooperate. Fire becomes a servant rather than an unpredictable force of nature. They learn to tan the skins of animals for clothing. They learn ways to record and probably exaggerate their adventures. Eventually, these tribes learn to build shelters and immediately hold the first barbecue parties. This is the dawn of humankind. Struggle and cooperation have been rewarded. The Neolithic era draws to a close. The whole world beckons. This tribe has come far, but the rest of their story is your story. You are the one who will build them into a great civilization. How far will you push humankind? As I said, a new era, a new epoch. While <laughs> your tribe looks to you for leadership, the weight of all those future, unborn generations also weighs upon your decisions. What sort of lives will they have? Indeed. So you yeah, get these cute little animations between switching through the eras, and you start out as Neolithic, and you are just a nomadic tribe. It says right here, you are not actually a civilization yet. You will, once you have fulfilled these little goals here, uh, or some of them anyway, uh, you will then be able to upgrade and pick a civilization to play as. Now, there is only a limited amount of civilizations to pick from, and you could potentially be left with what the AI didn't pick. Let's first discuss this, what we see here in a manner of assuming that you have really very little or no idea at all. Um, so what we have is we have these cells here, these hexagons in which things exist. For example, this one here would give us plus three food and plus one vision because it's, it's a mountain. So you see stuff from high up there. And uh, the different fields kind of have different values based on what they are. So if you have some wood, that gives some industry. If you have water, that gives food, obviously. If you have a special resource like incense over here, this has its own positive effects if you harvest it. And this tile where it's on gives some money uh, or wealth, it's probably called. You have this tribe here, this is the only thing. And here's the first differentiation to civilization. Your armies, while in civilization you can unlock that, you can kind of bunch them up together. In humanity, they're pretty much exactly from, from, the, from the beginning uh, have these slots. So we're gonna walk around, discover, uh, be a nomadic tribe, figure out what hides behind all these gray areas for us to see. And we will gather, forage, get some food, get some uh, whatever it is we might find. And we will grow as a tribe and we will eventually f start our first settlement. But as I said, right now we are not a civilization in, in any greater sense. Just because a culture died out doesn't mean it wasn't worthy of study. So we found the curiosity, an ancient encampment, giving us a plus three research and plus five influence. F influence we're going to need to, for example, build encampments, allowing us to claim territory. This works also very different as a civilization, which I really enjoy. You see these white dashed lines. These signify a territory and everything that is within those white dashed lines, like this territory here would be quite... Uh, worthwhile because it has two incense things so I'm gonna try and walk around it so once I have enough to settle I might settle here maybe we find something better still but uh, that's not a bad thing to uh, settle in ah there's some more incense there's a lot of incense where we live so we want these food pickups and these uh, science things because we need 15 science we need 
seven growth stars and we need some hunter or we need some hunter stars basically we only need to fulfill one of these so either we get a lot of science or we get a lot of growth or we hunt some animals to get this star and then we can pick something new uh, where we then become an actual civilization with bonuses and whatnot now where this differentiates itself I'm not going to read through these because it's just basically you get some influence, you get some uh, science. Unless you walk over one that gives you food, then you get some food, uh, which grows another tribe here. Or another bit of the tribe, basically. So we're going to pick up the food that just popped up down there. So in Civilization, you build a city and the city grows outward. So you would pick a tile and it would just, over time, kind of boop, 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 grow out. In here, you claim a territory and you can lay claim to it with an outpost but once you build the city it's yours you can then expand the city by annexing those outposts uh, and we'll get into that a little bit later first now these are kind of cute you get these events these flavor text based events uh, a little bit reminiscent of uh, games like crusader kings it's very basic and they're always kind of the same but they are triggered by different things you would get different events for example going into battle the first time and stuff like that so um let's see our scout comes to us breathless from exertion between gasps he tells us that despite another tribe far ahead he leads you on and after giving a stop signal we drop our bellies and crawl forward in the brush ahead a young woman no more than 13 summers is leading a ceremony her audience a dozen or so equally young or younger tribesmen Many are crying, and when uh, we see the bodies laid out, we understand that they are in mourning. You know what we must do. So now we have two options to choose from. We could either welcome these young children, and we would get a growing tribe, another army here in our little party. Or we could withdraw, uh, because they could be sick or cursed, and we don't want any of that. See, this gives an indication. It says, chances of triggering another narrative event. So they might actually be sick or cursed it's possible they might not be in our case we're going to welcome them and right next to us there is a new tribe here see they have just appeared and these guys we're going to send on auto explore i like to take charge of like one of them uh, but the other one can just or the other ones that uh, come up can just go walk themselves it's very neat because the auto explorer actually tries to get these uh, little discovery items so you don't need to worry about leaving good stuff in the world there's some copper here that's uh, also quite good looks like we have a decent starting area looks decent indeed up here these question marks are the civilizations we have not yet encountered or rather the tribes right now. Uh, down here at some point is going to be the first pop-up for another civilization or another tribe settling to become a civilization. There are these uh, random enemies that walk around that you could hunt. This is a mammoth. It's peaceful so it's not going to attack us. But it is definitely stronger than our little uh, tribe. If we had more tribes we could fight. Fighting is also quite different than civilization but in our case we're going to ignore it what you can also see here which i find is pretty neat because it requires you to think and it gives a little bit of a option for fortifications and stuff makes it a little bit more strategic uh going up hills or over rivers costs you more time and energy so uh, getting to over here is going to take us quite a bit of energy because we have to go up and over water and up again and it's just a whole hassle now down here is a little speech bubble because one of the tribes here has another affair which I assume is the consequent um, event from the event that we just had. So, okay, no, this is a different one. We stand at the crossroads. For many moons the tribe has trekked the wilderness slowly, torturously, learning the secrets of this world, how the materials hidden in the deep places and in plain sight might be fashioned into the tribe's advantage. How the beasts and plants of the lands and seas can be most fruitfully harvested, and how myths and stories can glacially but in inescapably give power over our greatest enemies, other tribes. Now we must find, uh, we must decide in what domain the tribe will truly sharpen its knowledge for the ages to come. 
Will you be renowned as makers, farmers, or charmers? Right, so we get to choose here. We could go by role-playing and just, you know, what we feel like. I don't think we have done anything much, so... Uh, well, we met these people, right, that we put in. So I feel like storytellers would fit. And that would give us plus one science per population on a city or an outpost. And this reverberates throughout the whole game. So whatever we pick here, this is what we get. And I feel like storytellers would be good because we had a little story to tell. And we haven't really foraged all that much. So we're getting slowly but surely to a point. Oh, actually we are at the point where we can claim our first outpost. Uh, that is to be considered carefully, obviously, because these uh, these materials here can be really, really, really powerful and important, especially something that is not a luxury resource, resource but rather something like copper, which is functional and important uh, for us later. So these are very, very worthwhile, and the land they're in is really fertile. There's a whole lot of food there. There's a good amount of... Uh, construction as well like settling here would probably be fantastic um, for a first city and I think our capital would be here but the next one should go for a strategic resource so we're gonna pick our guys and move them in the opposite direction what we also see is quite a lot of defense like uh, you can't cross over these mountains uh, there's no option for that let's hope the mammoth doesn't get in our way they're not gonna attack again but they are definitely going to be in the way. Like if they stand in the way, we, they stand in the way. Okay, in the distance, a thin cord of smoke cuts up in the blue, clear, blue, clear skies. Calling a few tribesmen, we run closer. The smell uh, of cindered bark and... We spy dancing flame and suddenly find ourselves on the edge of a settlement on fire. Many of the structures are ablaze. Okay, so let's see. Uh... Raw numbers will help us more than building techniques at this time. So we could help extinguish this and learn. So we get minus 20% on city defense research cost. I am not sure how long this is. Like, is this, is this game-wide? Because that's pretty dope. Um, but for now, maybe another tribe would be more beneficial to us. So we're going to go with another tribe and here we have the first one no nope, that's uh someone has found wonderful cover ian i'm not sure that's some natural wonder i assume i wouldn't know which but it is a natural wonder so somewhere here we should have a secondary tribe now very good we do this is we can't make a distinction between which one was the first but maybe these guys are going to be quicker over here Everyone kind of needs three turns to get there. It doesn't really matter. So we'll put all these on auto explore as well. It's fine. The top tribe can do this. So uh, we have not encountered a different tribe, which is good because there's no opportunity or reason for conflict yet. Of course, the mammoth walked straight into our way. So we could have fought it. But instead, we're going to walk around, and it takes us way longer than we wanted to get to the place where we want to go. But I don't think we actually have to go there. Specifically, we should be able to do it from up here. Form our settlement down there. But I want to pick this up first. It's definitely worthwhile making a little detour. These guys are going on. I'm not reading these because, sadly, they don't have a lot of interesting flavor text. Uh, we are almost there with the Knowledge Star, so we just need two more research and then we can uh, pick our, our civilization that we would like to be. We could, we, we don't have to. We don't have to, we can also not. And I severely miscalculated how this would work. <laughs> okay, so our Era Star has been unlocked and some nomadic tribe has also reached it right now and became Nubian. So if we click on this, we get a choice of these two have already chosen. So now we can pick from any of these civilizations to uh, play through the game. As we progress through the eras, we can choose either to 
uh, transcend the one that we choose now. Or we can pick new ones that give us new and different uh, bonuses that are more sensible for the area at hand. So all of these have their own bonuses and not so much drawbacks. Kind of because these get minus 10 stability on uh, Egyptian pyramids. Stability is an interesting mechanic that we can talk about a little bit later once we see it. So these are all the options and I have played as Egyptians, I have played with the Sioux, which I probably mispronounced, but I really like them because they have this high end stability thing going on with the Confucian school. Uh, I don't care too much about these guys, they're not great. But honestly, Arapans, well that's not bad. Lots of food, extra food, extra food, extra food for a lot of stuff. And they get runners. Ignores movement penalties from forests. Yeah, okay. It's not a good strong troop. Mm. So it's either the Harapans or the zoo for me i think we'll go with the harapans because this looks really nice all the green there and it kind of looks like where we're about to settle so this choice affects your clothing and how you kind of look uh which i think is, is pretty neat okay so because we're right now once i click this uh there's gonna be a little information thing but we'll see first, we need to finish our turn. The tribe came across a vast tract of wild grain. The ground down grain could feed the tribe twice over, but one of the tribal elders had another idea. Instead of pounding these seeds into flour, she suggests planting half of them so the grasses may return next summer. It's a curious idea. Okay, so minus 25% domestication, Research, we are no longer nomadic on the next one, so we're going to plant the seeds indeed. And we will end our turn and get our little cutscene. Markets begin the exchange of goods, services, and most important, rumors and hearsay. They make that way more important sounding. They left few remains. Please show us what they might have done. So that's a really cute little flavor text where they're just like, well, we don't know much about these people. But maybe you can show us something. Okay, so just like in civilization, you get some uh, ideas and suggestions to where where to put your city where I figured would be good is 18 food and 11 production but over there with 24 food and 10 production would be much better so we're gonna instead try and form our first city over there now these are our runners so all of our tribesmen have been upgraded to these special units that we have as this uh, culture and so far we have only found some dye, some more incense, some later relevant resources here. But we might want to take this area here where we got some copper going to give us a little bit of an early advantage. So we'll take these boys. And more likely than not it's going to be here somewhere or there where, it's, where it would be sensible to settle. So we'll move over there. These guys, someone shows Egyptians and these guys, come on, let's get going, let's do this thing. So uh, this settlement, this outpost will take a little bit of a while. We'll take one, split them out once they can turn again and split this army so we have some more people checking stuff out. Over here we have some horses potentially. Which is good because it's, uh, it's oh, this is a very good territory. Horses and double die. Oof. We might have to take this before we take this because this has two luxury resources and one strategic one. 
This one has only the strategic resource, which we might not even end up needing. It's good to have, but we might not need it. So I think we're going to instead go with this area here. So we're going to take these guys again, tell them to auto explore and end our turn here. Now the culture has been chosen. Now we can split these. I want to leave one army at home, but the other one gets to auto explore. Uh, these armies have very simple options to deal with. So we're going to tell them here to station. So they're going to go in a defensive stance and just stay there and not be asked about again in the near future. And these guys, I want to figure out where, where would this be? Where, where would be a good spot? Um, we want some production, some food. 11.6. It doesn't have to be high on all scores. That's perfectly fine. Things also don't need to be adjacent to each other all that necessarily. So let's see. Okay, it says there would be great, but that's a different area. <laughs> we want to settle here, not over there. So production-wise, we're not going to get a super good start here. But we could with growth. So we'll go and put our outpost here. Now, everything in this area is yours. No one else is able to deal with it unless they conquer you. Um, there is some influence mechanics going on, which I haven't understood yet. But that's okay. You don't need to fully understand everything when you just start out with the game. Maybe we can understand some mechanics to get that. So this would be our first foray into humankind. We have seen the first transition from Neolithic tribesmen, nomads to settling down. Choosing our first civilization and learning a little bit about the map and everything and... Now we will see what our little outposts and settlements do. This one will take three more turns to be established. Honestly, I think until then we can just auto explore with all of them. It's not like there's going to be a player jumping on us. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, thank you very much for watching. See you around next time. Until then, bye-bye.